This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4 disassembly. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and follow me on Twitter so you'll be notified when I upload a new video. If you'd like to further support the channel, you can leave me a super thanks below and I'll make sure to reply to all the super thanks comments. And if you need any tools, there are links in the description. First, the SIM tray needs to be removed. Next, heat needs to be applied to both the top and bottom back plate before we can use a plastic pry tool to pry them off. Here's a better look at the glass back plate. There's a plastic cover covering the connector which needs to be removed. Once that cover flies off, you can disconnect the flex cable from the main board. The glass camera lens covers can be replaced by applying heat and gently prying them off. There's some graphene film on the inside to help transfer heat, and the outer screen is adhered to the glass plate. There are two Phillips screws which need to be removed that are holding on the metal plate covering the connectors. For the most part internally, the Z Flip 4 looks very similar to the Z Flip 3. However, there are differences between the two. On the Z Flip 4, the battery connector is connected on the motherboard on this side of the board, compared to the Z Flip 3 where it's connected to the right side of the board. Another difference I can see, on the Z Flip 4, there's only a single millimeter 5G antenna on this side, compared to the Z Flip 3 which has dual, there's one over here and one over here. Surprisingly, there's still a slot over here in the frame for a second millimeter wave antenna. Also for the bottom half on the Z Flip 4, the connector is on this side, compared to the Z Flip 3 which is on the other side. Here's a comparison picture between the two. Now the film needs to be peeled off. We'll start off by disconnecting the battery cable first. Once that's disconnected, we can proceed to disconnect the rest of the cables. There are 8 more Phillips screws on this side of the flip that need to be removed. The top plastic cover can be lifted up and removed. Here's a better look at that. The front facing camera cable needs to be disconnected from the main board. However, that 10 megapixel front facing camera is glued in place, so prying it off would damage or break it. At this point, the main board can be lifted up and removed. This is a dual layer board design. There's a 12 megapixel ultra wide and a 12 megapixel wide lens. The main camera is the only one with OIS or optical image stabilization. The LED flash is located below and there's a secondary microphone located on the top corner. The SIM reader is located on the back as well as the camera connectors which can be disconnected by just popping them off. There's a proximity sensor and some more graphite film to help transfer heat. Once that's peeled off, we can see thermal paste on top of the RAM, which sits on top of the processor. Here's a better look with the thermal paste removed. So once that board is removed, we can see a 3D layer of graphite underneath the motherboard that again helps transfer heat. This flex cable is for the power button and fingerprint reader. If you wanted to replace that or remove that, you'd have to lift up and pull up this plastic cover and rubber gasket, and then it would release the power button and you'd be able to pull it out. The flex cable for the volume key is located here and it's held down with some adhesive. If you need to replace that, you have to gently pry that cable off and lift up and pull out this plastic and metal bracket. To remove the millimeter wave antenna, you'd have to just lift up and pull out this metal bracket and it will slide out. Here's a better look at that. Now when it comes to removing this battery, there are no pull tabs to help you pry it off. So you will need to use some isopropyl alcohol and apply some to the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute so it eats away at the adhesive underneath making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 1070 mAh battery. The earpiece speaker is located on top and that's also held down with some adhesive. There are 7 Phillips screws on the bottom half which need to be removed. The metal cover needs to be removed. 
The battery cable for the bottom half, as well as the NFC antenna and wireless charging coil cable need to be disconnected. Here's a better look at that. The bottom speaker assembly can be lifted up and removed. This bottom speaker assembly has a little white foam balls, which make the speaker sound larger than it actually is. This flex cable as well as the one for the screen need to be disconnected from the subboard. There's a single Phillips screw which is holding down the subboard that needs to be removed. Now the subboard can be lifted up and removed. The flex cable connecting the subboard to the main board needs to be disconnected. The charger port and primary microphone are both located on this subboard. There's also a red rubber gasket around the charger port itself. Here's a look at the other side. There are also no pull tabs on the bottom battery to help us pry it off, so we're going to have to use some isopropyl alcohol here as well, and apply some around the edges of the battery and let it sit for about 30 seconds to a minute, so it eats away at the adhesive underneath, making it easier to pry it off. Here's a better look at the 2630 mAh battery. The vibrator motor is located on the bottom, and it's held down with some adhesive. There are also rubber gaskets and mesh filters over the microphone openings, as well as the speaker opening. And there's a liquid damage indicator sticker underneath the sim reader on the frame. These flex cables are ran through openings in the frame, and there are cure in place rubber gaskets, which basically seal up the opening so no water or debris gets through. When it comes to replacing the inner foldable screen, it's pretty much the same as the Z Flip 3. If you want to see that in more detail, you can watch the video I did on the Z Flip 3. I don't want to risk prying this working screen off since there's a high chance of damaging it. The folding screen cable is located here. And basically all you have to do at this point, you have to pry off this plastic border. And then you'd heat up the foldable screen and just pry it off the frame. For the repairability score on this phone, I give it a 4 out of 10. Now it's time to put this phone back together. Once everything's back in place, flip over the phone, power it on, and you're done. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you in the next one.